it's experimental. I'm just working with live stream again. I'm talking to some really cool people. And because it's Aries season, welcome back, Paul. Welcome. There's Blue. Let me see. Welcome. So my darling, I'm going to send you an invite. I have Blue June from Blue June Tarot joining me today. I also have cards just in case. Hello, beautiful lady. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I, I'm good. Those are incredible glasses. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. They're spirit boards. <gasps> How gorgeous. And they glow in the dark, too. Oh, my gosh. How are you doing, girl? Thank you I'm so good, much. I'm good. I'm sorry I'm late. I had a session that went a little late. No apologies in the Aries project, girl. You got to do your leadership. You got to do your independence and authority. You know what I'm saying? I got to make that shmini. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing good. If you hear construction in the background, that's how Texas do. That's just how it do here. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I live in St. Pete right now, and everyone wants to live here, apparently, in the entire universe. And there's just, it's like, did I leave New York? I, <laughs> feels the same. <laughs> yeah, everybody's everybody's dispersing across the world right now it seems <laughs> can't really blame them you know <laughs> yes um i thank you for your time yeah. i i know that the energy is rocking and rolling right now and Ooh. there's a lot going on <laughs> and mercury is now in aries and i and i feel like uh, when i started these little projects they started growing um, I was thinking about all the areas that I knew, and I was like, oh, my God, blue is just this magnificent. If anybody's ever gotten a reading with blue, you are just, boom, cut and dry, give it to you straight, serve it like, here you go, take the Piping shot. hot tea. Yes. <laughs> Wigs, they're missing. We don't know <laughs> And I'm here for it, girl. I'm here for it. So if anybody wants a reading, blue is incredible, especially if you want that raw, raw, real. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie, Lady Darren. Thank you. <laughs> and hello to everybody in the chat. Thank you so much for joining and for anybody joining on the clips or um, the reshares. I really appreciate your time. Um, today we're here. I want to keep it like real chill and sweet for you because you've taken time out of your day. We are in airy season. The theme of this live stream is it is safe to be seen and heard. And I want to hear, I want to hear how that resonates for you as an Aries. Just that sentence, I um, wasn't planning on talking about this, but just you saying that reminded me of the thing I heard yesterday where this lady was like, oh, she's too much. She's too much for me. I don't, I don't like her. She's too much. And she points out that you're asking her, this woman, to be less. You're asking her to be less for you. Like she can take up space. She's allowed to take up space. Um, you know, and it, it, as an Aries, as an Aries woman, uh, you do face a lot of people not wanting you to say what you think as much as you need to, because that's who you are. That's the truth of who you are. Um, and you, you, you do face a lot of um, being called aggressive or abusive even sometimes just for being assertive and candid with people and it, it can be really difficult <laughs> and it does feel a lot of the time that people do want you to be less um one of the things that i've learned how to do is to make my energy really small because aries do tend to take up a lot of space what's your sign i'm an aries so you know exactly what I'm talking about. We can, if we're in a bad mood and we walk into the room, what happens? Luckily, it, yeah, it disperses the fire. <laughs> Everyone feels it. We can do our absolute best to not show anyone how we're really feeling and people can still feel it anyway. It really transmutes the energy of the whole space. And so I think we do have a slight responsibility to manage that a little bit because we do tend to create clairsentience everywhere we go in that way. 
Um, but in the world, you know, that that's like circumstantial. That's like if you have a corporate job, you know, and you ha part of your job is to be likable, you know, in a situation like that. Um, and it, it's really difficult to do, but it is kind of necessary. But when it comes to like day to day living in the world, you should not have to make yourself small. What do you think? I mean, I, uh, you know, this project has been so fun because started in Pisces season, now in Aries season. And it's just interesting to hear every Aries take and how they're finding it, how they're finding their make it big. But with Chiron and Aries, I'm finding a lot of people are having that Chiron wound come up through their Aries sun. And for me, I'm a stand-up comic. Some people, it was with their families. I'm finding it with different, like, Aries are different. That's where their warrior spirit has to go. And it's so beautiful. And I, I wanted to ask you, because I know you moved from New York to Florida, that north to south transition. I, I wanted to ask, when you, are you, do you have roots in Florida already before you moved to Florida? Yes, I'm actually from Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. And uh, then I moved to Orlando for a time where my mom lived like my whole life, basically. My brother's still there. I have two nephews. Um, and then I just decided to go to New York for 15 years for no reason. <laughs> yeah. To get that, but to disperse that fire in a very interesting way. I mean, I feel, because I'm also from like the Mason-Dixon line. I'm from Maryland. And I moved to New York for almost 10 years. And it's interesting when you go from like a certain mindset area as an Aries. How did you find what did you find in, in New York City and how did you bring that back to Florida? So just talking about being in Aries in New York, there was so much empowerment for me there. And one of the things that I learned was that, you know, you, like I said, you should take up the space that you are entitled to and, and just do. But one of the most important things I think that New York City taught me was just in general, our shadow aspects are part of us forever. Yes. And we don't cure that. We don't heal that forever. We have to learn how to manage it. We have to learn how to tell the ego, shush, the adults are speaking right now because the ego wants to take us into low vibrations a lot of the time. And it's a very necessary thing. I'm really grateful for the ego. But we have to do, we do have to tell it to shush. Um, so just learning how to love those parts of ourselves, as you put it, Aries are, are meant to be warriors, right? So it, we, somebody has to be on the front line. That's the way I put it. You know, I don't believe in war. I don't, I don't condone it at all, but it's a it's a perfect metaphor like someone has to be the first person to try bungee jumping and we're the perfect <laughs> candidate for this so you think <laughs> like where is skydiving for you on your bucket list i've done parasailing <laughs> i jumped off a mountain <laughs> this is how i gauge how aries a person is i ask them that question if they've already done it i'm like oh, yes i'm not worthy oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, I've, as I've learned in astrology that we're growing into our sun sign, it's, it makes more sense to be an Aries sun because it's more like the fear of blank. However, do that fear. Does it mean that you don't have fear as an Aries? Like that's... <laughs> It kind of does, doesn't it? Like, we just don't process fear. I'm not saying it's true for all Aries. You know, you got to really dig into the natal chart to see how that is going to affect a person, I think. But I don't think we experience fear like other people. Do you? It depends. And I don't want to blow up your chart because I know some readers keep their charts private. Some are public with their charts. But then we get into okay, the moon. But Oh, wait, wait, may I ask your moon and yeah. your rising? Gemini moon, Leo rising. 
So it's a <laughs> That's a beautiful chart. Lots of lessons in humility for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know so many Leo rising. My mom and my cousin are Leo risings. And then I'm in stand-up. I met many Gemini Leo combos. I you know find... something I learned from Astro Catherine? If you don't follow her, she's an amazing astrologer at Astro Catherine. Um, she taught me about family dynamics. It's actually very common for family members to have a lot of the same like rising. And I was like, what? And it's, it's crazy. But yeah, it's very common. <laughs> the f familial lines, it's so fascinating once you expand those out. And even both parental sides, you see crossover. It's fucking fascinating. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, do you have like a strong Pluto placement in your chart as well? I don't remember where my Pluto is. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. It's in my second house. Yeah. There's you're a talking... lot going on in my second house. So <laughs> it's like fascinating. All kind of there. There's a couple of things there. And then I have some things in later houses that are kind of unusual too. Yeah. Interesting. So that, that Gemini moon, you can, it's it, the other piece of this that I also think is fascinating as an Aries. If you have a lot of second house stuff, it's a lot of that self-worth stuff. But then you go to then now you're in a place like Florida, which I'm I'm going to Florida in a couple of weeks. I'm on the panhandle side, but nice. I have been to a Florida a many a time to do stand up and they do not like me. Um, <laughs> so it's, yeah, sorry about them. I'm not um, one of them. <laughs> but it's it's just interesting that your medicine is there. It's like you're bringing this literally this pillar candle down into Florida to disperse the light in a place that is the swamp in a lot of ways, that murky. And I feel a lot of Pluto energy when I go to a place like Tampa or Orlando. Yeah, oh. well, it, it, it is really close to the Everglades. So, and I, where I'm from is even closer. It's right on the edge. So um, I do, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I was just telling a friend this morning on a phone call that the land absolutely loves me here. But like you, the people do not. <laughs> so it's interesting to hear your perspective that I'm like shining this light. I, I want that to be true so badly. And I'm sure in many ways that is true. Um, but I'm here for something else. I think I'm here to create some speed bumps, which is very Aries for people. Like, you need to look at this. You need to look at, I'm here to do like difficult work with difficult people, if that makes sense. That's what mm -hmm. I think I'm in a spiritual sense and in a um, career aspect. That's what I'm here for. Gosh. Yeah. Well, I, I want to, the, the song that popped into my head, it's an old John something. It's like blow, blow, seminal wind. Are you a country fan? No, blow, like you absolutely never... not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, from a, I'm from a town that is full of rednecks and they happily call themselves as such. Um, my high school was full of those kinds of people. And you see the racism that coincides with that genre of people. It was not for me. Never, ever. Sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> but I oh, do no. know that song. I know a lot of country songs, like um, way down yonder on the Chattahoochee, never knew how much I muddy water meant to me. But I learned how to swim. I'm not, I know the whole song. <laughs> just believe me i'll stop serenading you <laughs> oh no it's it's just the song pops into my head because i feel this like i i so i'm a sagittarius moon so for me i do i'm not really good with individual readings i do land readings like land and region readings and every region has its medicine and the everglades the like the song is like the land of the Seminoles and it's like a tribute to to the fact that the land got exploited and I feel like is that really what the song is about yeah it, it's about how like huh it's a it's about like the at one point you know here's where the ancient animals resided and the ancient energies resided and then blow that seminal wind 
blow that energy across Florida and you have that, that Gemini moon, like your voice, your, your medicine, it's, that's your power. Like you're literally living that song in a lot of ways. Like, wow. You're going to give me a big head love. <laughs> well, no, I, I see it as almost like we dispersed as lights. Everybody who's been called to move somewhere has dispersed as a light to sit and on a grid line for some reason. And here you are, this Aries energy here, doing your Aries work. It's very, to me, it's very uh, symbolic. I don't know. <laughs> I get into weird places sometimes. No, I love that. And I feel bad because I kind of derailed it. I only know the chorus of that one. So I had no idea that's what it was about. But I remember when it was playing on the radio a lot. I sure remember that. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll maybe send you a different version of it. And, but I feel like that's what you're doing as an Aries. Like you're like fighting for like this energy that was exploited almost. Yeah, that's uh, very apparent with the land right now. Um, just like the earth spirits in Florida, especially this side, this area of, of the state when you're so close to where nature still is in charge uh, for now. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't say that because like for now is our, it's our extinction really, <laughs> not, not nature. Nature's doing just fine. She's going to be just fine once we're gone. Um, <laughs> so just to correct myself, but yeah, you can, you can sense that a lot. There's a lot of, um, I wouldn't say reparations to be made, to be honest. Like, there are not a lot of natives left in Florida. Uh, co colonization took good care of that. Um, unfortunately, there is, there's atonement that needs to happen. And that's big on the speed bump work that I'm here for. Does that make sense? Absolutely. 100 thousand million percent i'm like the old tiny secretary is like connecting <laughs> this one and like burr, 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 burr. that's that's what i feel like i'm doing i'm confused so we're gonna get there though <laughs> do you do you do any live performance yeah i uh as a tarot reader i definitely did a lot more in new york there's so much opportunity for house of yes there were like these lawyer speakeasies I was working at, um, Ruby Lod, which is this amazing underground party. It's just packed full of weirdo bullshit. There's kitschy shit everywhere. It's so fun and beautiful. Um, and you know, I, uh, I'm a theater nerd, so do that too. <laughs> well, let me know if you're ever doing any live performance um, and I'll, I'll keep track of your schedule because I know with that Leo rising and my friend Paul's very interested as well. He's also an Aries. Hi, Paul. Paul. Um, because with that Leo rising, I know you got to disperse that fire. Um. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I made a reel yesterday, which I feel like is performing as well, very much so. Um, and I, would, I asked people, like, do you, who's more likely to talk you into a fight, a Leo or a Gemini? <laughs> and everyone of course like it was mostly leo mostly but uh in in the way that i made it the gemini moon is much more for me much more likely to talk me into a fight the leo rising kind of keeps me out of trouble because it keeps me worried about perception and how other people are going to feel about uh having a tarot reader that went to jail <laughs> so, <laughs> the leo rising keeps me in line just for that reason. <laughs> I would want to work with a tarot reader that went to jail. I'd be like, oh, that person speaks their mind. <laughs> like, they went, boom. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do that whether or not people like it. <laughs> that's the work, though, you know? That's the work. Right. So is there and anything else that you want to ask me before I go? Oh, I just wanted to thank you for your time. I did want to ask how people can find you and work with you um, and you. connect with you. Thank you. Thank you. I love self-promotion, so no <laughs> problem. Um, 
You can find me on Instagram at Blue June Tarot. I do a tarot scope every day um, where I talk about the mundane astrology of the day and then I pull a card on it. Um, you can book a reading. There is a button that says book now in my bio page and there's also a link in the bio. The button is better because the link changes sometimes depending on whatever I'm promoting. I do uh, phone sessions so you can book me from anywhere. I also do mentoring and uh, I do a monthly spell work service. You can see all of it on the booking page. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time, Blue. And please work with her. She's freaking awesome. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to plug my podcast, Mystic Witch Podcast. And, uh, yeah, that's that's the last thing. I promise. <laughs> Is that on uh, iTunes, Spotify? You can find it on any streaming service, pretty much. If it's not on there, let me know. I'll make sure it gets on there. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Stay mystic. Stay mystic. Have Bye. a great day. Bye.